How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews. Back with a little side-by-side -side hopeful goodness in the form of Reeve Brewing. It is their Down the Rabbit Hole Series Imperial Stouts. Two barrel-aged versions. We have your number eight, or volume eight, as I would put it, and you have barrel-aged volume nine over here. First things first, both of these come courtesy of my boy Carson. Thank you very much. He's actually sent me off four of these stouts. Two of the barrel-aged versions, two of like an adjunct laden version versions. We're going to dive into the barrel-aged ones first. Do a little bit of side-by-side, -side, see what's what. Here we go. As far as eight goes, it says Imperial Stout Age on Vanilla Bean and Coffee. So it's barrel-aged Vanilla Bean and Coffee. Over here we have Volume 9, which is Imperial Stout Age on Vanilla Bean and Cinnamon. So Cinnamon versus Coffee. I assume they're using the same barrels on both of them. And we'll see what's what. Um, yeah, let's just crack it in these suckers. See what they got. Do the old double pour. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. I love these old Mickey style kind of uh, bottles here. I've uh, talked about them ad nauseum when I do all the Rev stuff. Um, these are pretty cool. Got a bigger hiss out of this one. So we'll see how the carbonation kind of sits. It wasn't like a m huge difference. But um, what would be your, your right, my left? Had a bigger kind of head kind of go or hiss going on, I should say. Um, I don't think there's that big of a difference on either of them, to be perfectly honest with you. So it is what it is. I mean, obviously there's a bigger head over here, but I poured that one pretty vigorously over here. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, Label-wise, I didn't even talk about that. Um, it's okay. You know, it's pretty much the way the uh, I did a sour kind of fruited sour from them. That is okay. That is one of my favorite patterns in the history of mankind, just like that weird kind of spiral thing. Um, I work in, or I did work in the tattoo industry for many, many years, and that's like one of the kind of uh, staple kind of hipster kind of tattoo designs, but I've always kind of dug it. In the grand scheme of things, it looks the same. This one, the head seems slightly darker, but that could just be the head smaller, so it's, you know, just kind of, you're seeing that darkness from the actual beer in there, so... For all intents and purposes, she looks the same. I'm going to tell you this right now. I already smelled whiskey, so I think these might be a little bit hot. So let's start with number eight over here. We're talking about vanilla and coffee. There's coffee. There's all the coffee. Here's the thing about it, and I don't want to say this and come off as like a negative kind of coffee note. Because I don't think it's negative. This smells exactly like what hits you in the face when you open up your coffee maker's... Um, uh, where you put the coffee grounds after you brewed a cup of coffee. You know, it's still hot, still steaming. You open up that drawer and you get hit in the face with that steamy coffee ground smell. That's what you're getting over here. So it's it's that kind of coffee, but it's brewed coffee, black coffee, like a charred roast coffee with the, just that rich, dark, like overly coffee coffee. I'm not really getting much as far as anything, as far as spirit. There's a soft whiskey vibe to it but that's pretty much it and really the coffee is by far and away the most the vibrant part of the nose here it's unrelenting in a kind of tasty way we'll see well at least nasally tasty way um it's not bad overt coffee but you're talking about a big coffee stout i want coffee in my coffee stout Let's see what this uh vanilla cinnamon has to offer Let's see and this is the thing i'm gonna switch these so we're going to take the number eight, which is the coffee variant, the cinnamon. Go like that. Why am I doing that? Um, I'm not getting a ton of much of anything over here. Getting soft vanilla, maybe a little bit of soft cinnamon. The coffee over here is so overpowering. I want to go last on this one now. I don't want to overpower what's going on here. That's one of the kind of inherent kind of negatives when it comes to these side-by-sides is that your palate's not fresh going into either beer, but it's fun to do. But this one is so aggressive that it's giving me a hard time actually pulling much out of here. So, anyway, let's try it again. I mean, you're definitely getting a vanilla. I'm not getting a ton of cinnamon. There's a soft kind of spiciness in that kind of... Um, winter warmer gingerbread spiciness vibe I'm getting. So that's your cinnamon at play, but it's just not over the top. It's just not super vibrant because I think that coffee is tampering a lot of that down. Um, I'm still not getting a huge kind of barrel character out of this or a huge whiskey thing. Sure, there's a little bit of soft, sweet spirit in there, but nothing too hot. 
Again, I don't think there's an ABV on here. Uh, these don't smell gigantic. Um, I mean, they're called Imperial Stouts, so you, you hope they're above, uh, you know, uh, you know, into double digits. We'll see what's what. So I'm just going to dive into this uh, vanilla cinnamon and see what she has to offer. Cheers. Man, that's creamy. Super soft. Like, pillowy soft. There's a big bittering component to it. It almost reminds me of like a uh, Russian Imperial Stout, to be perfectly honest with you. That vanilla comes through. It doesn't hit you in the face. It's vibrant. It's big. It's bold. It's there. But with how roasty, toasty, and bittering this beer is, I think you're getting it a bit from the malt. I think you're getting it a bit from the hops. It tempers a lot of that sweetness and ends up making that vanilla, for me way more pleasurable because one of the one of the big problems I have with vanilla is it can get a little bit too much for me. I know a lot of people really dig it when it comes to a lot of these Imperial Stouts. But I think get a little too heavy handed. Well, I think it's here in gobs. That bittering component here keeps it in check and makes it infinitely more pleasurable, at least for me. There is cinnamon there. It's probably like a second or third player in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the adjuncts, barrel included. And it adds this, this kind of soft, spicy component to it, almost the way you like an herbal hop would, but more in that kind of, you know, cinnamon characteristic. It's not overtly cinnamon. It's more of kind of like, when I talk about cinnamon a lot of times in beer, I can kind of equate it to like a Coca-Cola kind of vibe. Somewhere in between those two. But it adds this added spicy element that you get a soft barrel chart to it. It's probably equal with that. So the barrel's present. The whiskey component, which I assume is in here, uh, is, is, is you get the soft kind of um, cherry generic kind of bourbony kind of thing going on, but nothing too crazy. It's not a hot beer by any means, but I think it's just eking into your double digits. It's like 10 and change, maybe just hitting 11. But the way the vanilla plays with how bittering the beer is, it just works for me. Now, we're moving over here. There's no vanilla over here. You're talking about coffee and, and vanilla. Sorry, I was wrong there. I forgot about that. Coffee and vanilla. That vanilla is going to be very, very important here. Because if the bittering in this beer stays where it's at and that coffee accentuates that, the vanilla really needs to show up and do some do some heavy lifting because it might get a little bit too bittering for me. So take a little sip of this and then we'll dive into the other one. Man, the mouthfeel on that is fucking fantastic. Cheers. Okay. It's definitely not over the top. I like this. I like that. The vanilla comes through. That roasted component, that bittering over here is still kind of present over here. It just doesn't come off as vibrant. It doesn't come off as hefty, which is nice because that coffee definitely comes through. It doesn't come off the way it smells, though. The coffee is vibrant, meaningful, tasty, and delicious. But it doesn't have that kind of, when I talked about pulling that tray out and you get a hit with that waft, that big kind of uh, coffee steam smell when you do the whole ground coffee thing. It doesn't really play that way in the taste. So the coffee comes off, what I'm trying to say is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more impactful in the nose than it does on the taste. And the taste, it still comes off as like a non-cold pressed coffee, a legitimate brewed coffee, but there's a little bit more kind of depth to it, a little bit more robust, not as bitter, not as sharp, not as ghetto, I guess you would say. And it works nice. I like it. I like it. And I love coffee beers, but I kind of, there's something about this one that just, man, really is doing me all kinds of proper. Yeah. Vanilla. Mouthfeel is almost as pretty as this one. Maybe it's just a slight bit below that. Coffee comes off nice. Not overly aggressive. Tasty. These are both really good beers. I mean, this is like a, you know, 1A, 1B kind of conversation again. I think I actually mentioned that in, in one of the other Rev ones when I was doing the, the kind of fruited sours, but really tasty. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. Now I'm kind of like second guessing myself. Which one do I like more? You know, 
I really enjoy how the vanilla shows over here with the bittering and just a base beer. But over here, that coffee brings it up a bit. But again, the bittering of the base isn't nearly as big. I don't get as much barrel character over here. That's probably your coffee taking lead. I like them both. Man, they're good. They're really good beers. Here's the thing, though. They are stated to be barrel aged volume eight and volume nine. While I do get a soft spirit character, that could be just sweetness from the beer or placebo effect. And I do get a soft barrel character more over here than I do over here. I, they don't ring to me as a big barrel aged beer. They're t tasty. They're delicious. But they come off more like adjunct heavy. I shouldn't even say that because it's still very much beer than anything else. But it tastes like it, it, the flavors I'm getting from it, I think you could get from adjunct as opposed to just straight up barrel aging. But that's just me. Um, but they're really tasty. Which one is better? I don't know. We're going to have to do science here then. The Cuvier. This is probably going to be the best one. Here we go. This is all for all the marbles. The coffee still comes through here. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Hmm. Take one more sippy poo and then we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm not a ranker. I don't like sit here and rate beers, do all that kind of things. This is a base, I think is my favorite one. This comes a very, 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 very close second. This is a third. Now, why is that? The thing I really enjoyed about this one over there, the cinnamon vanilla version, was the cinnamon added, like, an added kind of flair to the beer but the vanilla played off the base stout portion of the show in a very very pretty very very fun way that really kind of turns me on the coffee over here it added a component kind of the side over here but kind of dampened some of them over here so while it's like a 1a 1b conversation just knee-jerk reaction this one comes off a little bit better for me you know you figure throw them throw them together the, the old cuvee kind of thing I think the vanilla gets a little bit too big and where you had that kind of nice balance over here with the vanilla and you had that coffee coming up over here the both of them eke a little bit higher but then that vanilla just gets a little bit too big not for a, like a lot of people i think if you actually gave this to somebody it'd be like oh i still wish there was more vanilla but for me it just becomes a little bit not out of balance but the vanilla is a little bit too vibrant in here and when you actually mix them together for it to become like something absolutely 100 percent like bonkers crazy awesome but i dig it i mean in the grand scheme of things longer review longer um they're both fantastic beers listen this is i think the now the fourth uh rev uh, stouts that I've had, and these are some of the better ones, some of the more interesting, some of the more unique ones that I've had coming out in the scene as of late. So if you just boil that down to the basics, I'm really enjoying what I'm having from these guys, especially from the stout end of things. So, um, you know, if if you're out there, let's cut to that cheese. Um, yeah, it's some of the better kind of barrel-aged beers. Mm. Some of the better Imperial Stouts. Let's just make it basic. Um, that I've had as of late. They're not super <coughs> barrel forward, <coughs> but they're still pretty damn tasty. Valued availability, that whole thing. You know, small brewery in Florida, you get the drift, but leave you with, if you like what we like this, that's what I was trying to get at. You know, if you're really into these kind of, you know, new school, kind of adjunct laden, kind of barrel laid stouts, I think these are ones that really people should pay attention to because. Even though these aren't crazy over the top, like barrel forward beers, I think they're a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more kind of delicate in a really positive way. More often than not, when you're talking about barrel aging, you want a bit of impact. You don't want it too much, but you want a hefty impact. And, and, and more often than not, a lot of breweries kind of 
you know, fall short of that. They end up coming off in, like, really not much barrel character, not much as far as spirit or any of that stuff. And while these ones are not over-the-top barrel character and spirit, I think there's a kind of gentle balance between both of the two. And the way the adjuncts go down, the way the cinnamon plays over here, and the way the coffee kind of hits you in the nose but doesn't get too crazy in the mouth over here... I think it's a really interesting take on the way adjuncts are played. And 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 that's probably the more interesting part of it is the uniqueness. I don't get this kind of play when it comes to barrel and adjuncts. So it's kind of making me think. And when I think, not only does it hurt my brain hole, um, it makes me happy because that means there's some kind of innovative uniqueness. Now, sure, it just could be people fucking around and it just so happens that's the way it works, but that's how ingenuity is, you know? Fingerprint uniqueness of the person making a beer and, you know, something about these kind of tickle me pink, so take that for what it's worth. So there you go. Another review of the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out on the social media stuff. Beer Massive. If you want to check me out in the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed our review hopefully you're enjoying nice little red brewing right now and hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>